We had a previous video where we made a graph that looks something like this. A graph that we made um, had data that spread at a greater distance across the x-axis. This data is much more grouped into an area looking at ranges between about 60 and 90. So we often need to change the scaling of the axes in order to make that graph take up more graph space. <coughs> in order to do that, make sure that you click the graph itself. Once you click the graph itself, the chart tools appear. You will need to go to the axes box and change the x-axis, which is the horizontal axis. And the easiest way to do that is to go to more primary horizontal axis options. The default is for auto to turn on, and that's where Excel sets up the scaling for you. We know that we want our data to be about 60, because that's where our data starts. Um, and perhaps we only want our data to go up to 90. Typically when we're graphing, we want the graph to take up as much of the graph space as possible. Additionally, the major units are listed, and we might want our units to, instead of be counted in 20s, maybe counted in 5s would be better, and our minor unit would be best to change that to 1s. Um, we are going to go ahead and close, and you can see that our graph now takes up a much greater space. To also help the reader um, make some decisions about what they're looking at on the graph, we can add grid lines. And to add grid lines, go up to the grid lines portion of the chart tools layout tab. The minor grid lines are what we want to add. And then the vertical, so minor grid lines here, that makes it so the um, graph space turns into a grid and you can count better and, and see what the actual values might be. Additionally, uh, yesterday we added a trend line and our options are a linear trend line or an exponential trend line. So we'll, we'll try linear to see how that looks. It looks like it's a pretty good fit, but we also have the exponential, which also seems like it's a reasonable fit. So which of those two lines is better? Um, to figure that out, you can select the trend line and right click so you get the menu and format trend lines the option you'd like display the r squared value on the chart is what we like to do so what that's doing is that's telling us um, how good of a fit these data are the closer the r squared value is to one tells us there's a better uh, fit for the data to that line so I'm also going to select the linear trend line format the data display r squared value um, also other choices that we have here. Display the equation, which is useful because if you have a y equals mx plus b, um, you can extrapolate going past your graph in order to predict what molecular mass might be. Um, a change in temperature for a molecular mass of 90 might be or 100. So both of these are um, close to 0.97. So really either line is probably okay. Um, I'll remove them. 0.9771. It looks like the linear was just a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the linear, reformat. And there we are. Um, if in doubt, start clicking buttons and playing. It's not that you can really break a graph. You can always regraph it by selecting your data and starting over. So just work until you find something you like.